John Cassavetes' films, at their core, remain about the human ability to connect with each other and with ourselves, to love and be loved in return. Rejecting a neat formulaic approach to filmmaking, Cassavetes consistently dared to portray complex, unpredictable characters whose actions and choices reflected their inability to communicate and exist fully and happily in the world. By painstakingly drawing out the individual, quirky, fascinating character traits of each of his characters, Cassavetes crafts cinematic worlds in which individuals cannot help but scrape and crash into each other in a mad desire for fulfillment. Like all of Cassavetes' films, A Woman Under the Influence celebrates difference physical, social, sexual. Nick's sparse to the point style of communicating is contrasted with Mabel's impetuous verb and vulnerability. With such a strong understanding of who these characters are, Mabel allows the viewers to become absorbed in not just what the characters are doing, but who they are. In the spaghetti breakfast scene, for example, actions are relegated to a less important place in the narrative than the emotional connections being made from across the table. Spaghetti falls to the floor and telephone cords get tangled, but our focus remains on the character's attempt to connect emotionally with each other. Mabel tries hard, too hard, to please her guests and her husband. Tell me what you want me to be. How you want Mabel's me to be. lack of understanding of herself blocks that. her ability to understand anything. how to act and compose herself around others. This insecurity is palpable in the ways in which Mabel deals with her children. In her efforts to connect with them, Mabel transforms into a hypomanic child, begging for a time out. But Nick too has his issues with their children. After he takes over primary parental responsibilities, one might think the children would find themselves a part of a more stable lifestyle. Cassavetes, however, confounds our expectations by revealing in their father a parent no more capable of rational or responsible decision-making than their mother. He pulls them out of school to spend a long, depressing day on the beach. On the way home, he drinks beer with them. All of these scenarios exist to allow Cassavetes' excellent cast room to exhaust themselves. And us while trying to make emotional connections. Jesus Christ! Nick screams and shouts, knowing no other way to make himself hurt. Mabel, in contrast, seems as fragile as a China doll. A similar strong desire to connect with others can be seen throughout Cassavetti's film, Minnie and Moschewitz. In one such scene, Minnie talks to Florence about her desires and dreams for the future. But her attempts to connect with Florence are unsuccessful. Florence seems not to understand a word she says. She simply sits there bewildered. You know, I don't go out much. This relentless you know desire to connect humanizes all of Cassavetti's characters, too, huh? even those say playing that. supporting Wait. roles. I say, hello. Hello, Zelmo, hello. played by actor Val Avery, I say anything I can think is a quintessential example of really. the ways in which Cassavetti's character's desire to alone. connect confounds our expectations. On a blind date with Minnie, Zelmo practically shouts across the table. He's insufferable. And yet his wholehearted desire to connect with Minnie, to have her understand why he fears women so thoroughly, leaves the viewer unable to simply loathe him. Cassavetti's characters, even supporting ones, are too richly drawn out to elicit a simple emotional response. The human awkwardness of the Zelmo blind date scene in Minnie and Moskowitz is paralleled in awkward moments in other Cassavetti's films. One example can be found in the behavior of the three men featured in Cassavetti's husbands. Near the end of the film, the men meet three women at a casino and attempt to seduce them. The resulting scene is a study in the awkward, uncertain attempts at communication that remain a hallmark of Cassavetti's filmmaking. In his own artistic life too, Cassavetti seems determined to connect with others. After an early screening of his first film, Shadows, Cassavetes was so upset by the audience's cool response to the film that he reshot and edited a majority of the film. Cassavetes would later call the first version a totally intellectual movie and therefore less than human. 
In his drive to connect with audience members, Cassavetes completely altered the film, ironically alienating some of his most ardent admirers. In 1960, Village Voice columnist Jonah Mikis wrote, The second version of Shadows is just another Hollywood film. The first version was the most frontier-breaking American feature film in at least a decade. By rejecting formulaic conventionality in his filmmaking, Cassavetes permitted his films to seize an honesty and truthfulness lacking in most studio filmmaking. His films are not about events. They are about characters. And his characters' constant struggles between trying to look good, appeal to others, and fit into an ill-shaped mold is shoved against a deeper want and need, the ability to communicate with others openly, to speak and be heard, to listen and understand, to love and be loved. And the rest of the stuff really doesn't interest me, you know. It may interest other people, but I, you know, I have one track mind. That's all I'm interested in, is love. So, that's the end of the show. <laughs> we have no more to say. Have a good time. Enjoy it.